Thank you, Bishop Benedict, for your <clears throat> kind invitation to be with you here today. This is a very difficult moment, not just for Ukrainians and the country of Ukraine, but for the entire world. I'm so pleased that the voices that are raised today in praise of God are voices of children. Yes, this moment is about the territorial integrity of a nation, the ability of a country that has enjoyed democracy for 30 years to continue with self-determination, and the rights of people to select their own government. But young people, this is also about you. Because this moment is an opportunity for the whole world to reflect on what kind of world we want to leave to future generations. What kind of world we want you to live in. Because we know from the past how nations have been subjugated by other powers. How people's rights have been violated. How war has been so easily used to dominate. And it is our moment in the history of our world to say stop. No more. We want a different world for our children. That is what this moment is all about. That is why the entire world is raising its voice in outrage, but also support. This morning I received a text from a friend in Europe who drew to my attention that the chief rabbi of Ukraine has asked Christians and Jews to recite, recite Psalm 31 aloud. This is how the psalm reads. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed me the wonders of his love when I was in a city under siege. In my alarm I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him, but the proud he repays in full. Be strong and take heart, all who hope in the Lord. It is the hope in the hearts of you young people that is the most powerful weapon against tyranny. And we unite today with that hope and support those who struggle today for freedom in Ukraine. May God continue to bless Ukraine and all Ukrainians. Today, we are all Ukrainians. Thank you.